we'll get a smile out of Jacoby for that one. Welcome to another edition of the Parastyle Podcast. I am very excited. It's uh, Wednesday evening. Uh, I got some NBA playoff games and st- or play-in games going on, but we're going to do, we're going to talk some USC football. The transfer portal is open. USC spring game is on Saturday. And uh, thanks again to House of Victory. We have a very special guest. And I'm, I'm juiced for this one, Connor, because I, I haven't had a lot of interactions with Jacoby Lane yet. We're He was early. We're starting the show a little bit early. He's like, yeah, do your thing with the, the podcast intro. He's laughing at it. It's great. <laughs> Jacoby Lane, uh, software wide receiver. What's up, bud? How you doing? I'm um, good. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you guys. All right. This is great. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to like text Miller. I'm like, dude, you didn't bring the energy that Jacoby brought. Already. <laughs> this is great. We've had a, a fun uh, kind of series going, get, getting guys back on through House of Victory. Um, so thanks again to them. I'll put the, the QR code up there if you want to donate to House of Victory. They've uh, made this uh, interview possible. Send up Jacoby. He's over in the uh, over on campus. Uh, where you get tutored, nice, quiet place. He's got good lighting. It sounds good. I'm very excited. Uh, you know, what buttoned up young man, he's going to do big things. Obviously, you saw a couple of touchdowns in the Holiday Bowl. Uh, but thanks again uh, for coming on, man. Are you you pretty excited for uh, the uh, spring game coming up on Saturday? Yeah, of course. An opportunity to show the fans what we've been working on, uh, kind of get out there, uh, stretch our legs a little bit, uh, compete a little bit. Um, get another chance to go to the Cali, always good to play there. That's like, um, play, it's super surreal anytime you're in there. So, um, but uh, more importantly, the fans, uh, being able to have them there and uh, feel that support is kind of what, what I've been uh, searching for and uh, longing for for a little bit. So I can't wait to get out there in the Cali and see everybody. Nice. We'll, we'll pepper you with questions in a second, but I just want to let everyone know we are, this is our Parasol podcast. We're live on YouTube right now. So if you're in the chat, and you have a question for Jacoby, we'll try to put it in there and I'll, I'll pop it up on the screen. Or if you just have a funny comment or something or whatever, I'll try to, I'll, I'll put it up there. And I uh, wanted to let everyone know there is a big House of Victory event coming up on Monday, April 29th, the House of Victory Legends of Troy. So a lot of, we talked about some of the people that are going to be in there, like some of the legends like Mark Sanchez and Matt Barkley, John David Booty, uh, Rodney, uh, Rodney Pete, Mark McGuire, Home Run King, April Ross will be there. But also, USC Athletic Director Jen Cohen's going to be there, Lincoln Riley, uh, Eric Musselman, the new uh, basketball coach. This will be his first event as a Trojan. Lindsey Gottlieb, who made that run uh, in the uh, NCAA tournament. Uh, Quincy Watts will be there from track and field. Uh, so a lot, lot of, uh, lot of stars will be there from the USC side. So go check it out, houseofvictory.com slash legends if you want to uh, see that. But uh, we want to start off, uh, Jacoby, with – I'm going to put a picture up here. Don't get embarrassed or anything. But this was on, uh, I think, Benny Wiley's Instagram. From uh, January 8th, you were 185 pounds, looking pretty good. And then on February 27th, 195, uh, we see a lot of six-pack going on there. Um, man, that just seems like a – I did a 45-day challenge for my gym, and I, like, lost 10 pounds, but I didn't look at <laughs> – like that what was that what's that transformation been like for you uh i think it's been a a a a healthy one and a needed one um i think uh i think when i first got here i was around 167 pounds so being able to you know not only make the jump from uh 180 uh 185 to 195 but uh just the whole time kind of like be able to monitor myself and uh kind of keep on myself and uh do do what was right on and off the field and kind of uh, do what my body needed and uh, be mature and grow a little bit and, and not indulge in all the uh, uh, like uh, little meals and kind of just take stuff seriously. And then um, uh, in the weight room, Coach Coach Wiley, uh, I, I eventually moved down to his rack and I um, just every day, every set, every rep, it kind of just all adds up. And then uh, it, it just uh, the the results show, I guess. Jacoby, I'm curious with this transformation, what's the diet been like? And during this time, do you have a favorite lift? Is there something that you look forward to in the gym when you guys do that? Um, uh, diet, um, little Galen. Um, I eat there a lot. Like they they do a good job of like always having like steaks and uh, good mashed potatoes. Um, when I when I first got here, uh, I actually uh, was like every morning I would go in and eat a, a a waffle with peanut butter on it and uh just uh drowned it in syrup so 
I would I would eat that. And I think um, just just not necessarily like the diet, but always going in and like eating the meals. Um, I'm one of those people that like if I'm not really in the mood, um, I won't eat it. But like, unfortunately, that's not like a college athlete. That's not how you really can eat. So like I had to like really realize that and kind of and, and take it more serious. And um, our, our nutritionist, Rachel, and them do a great job of helping us um, figure it out. So once I got on a plan and um, uh, just stuck to it, everything uh, kind of sol solved itself out. Is that hard? I mean, for because you guys are, you know, college age kids, you want to eat cookies and ice cream, whatever the heck you want. And you're, you know, in really good shape already. But if you want to get to that elite level, it's like you got to cut a lot of that stuff out. Was that kind of hard for you? And is it hard for a lot? You know, there's some players that are just like, I mean, there's NFL guys. They're like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm eating my cookies. I don't care. Um, but is, has it been, yeah, is it hard, you know, for that kind of stuff? Yeah, I don't mean to cut you off. Sorry. No, but no, I, I just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that uh, everybody knows, like, you can always, like, eat cookies and, like, indulge on, like, all the, the gummies and stuff. But eventually that stuff adds up. So, like, um, and, and your body doesn't, as much as you can say, your body feels good running on that stuff. It really, it, it really in the end does it. And uh, you just feel a, a whole lot better when you, you get good sleep and are eating the right meal. So, um that that all kind of like translated into my um my daily routine and uh it kind of helped me a lot so now that i've stuck to that i can i kind of won't go back so do you have a favorite lift are you a bench press guy squat guy pull up guy uh probably like a, a clean guy I, I like to get under the bar a little bit do a little dynamic stuff i'm not much of a like stationary guy and then now, Jacoby, so this is your first spring camp, but your second overall camp under Lincoln Riley. You went through the fall, of course, last season. What's this been like for you? It's still technically year one academically, but transitioning now to season two, what's been it, or what's it been like for you, excuse me, this second camp at USC? Now you have a season under your belt. What are the differences? Um, I think uh, the experience as far as like being able to um, adjust to the game speed, get a little bit of a, a, a feel for uh, uh, my uh, my play style and how I like to uh, go into my routes and stuff. So I just think, um, um, and also uh, having a year under the playbook and being able to um, go in and, and not just run routes and think about what my route is, just being able to go in, run routes, and look at the defense and be able to run my route, uh, excuse me, run my route based off the defense. Um, uh, and just just be able to play the game a little slower, uh, make it all work for me, and be able to uh, um, just just play the game at my, my level, like I used to in high school, and just uh, take it all take it all back. Uh, Jacoby, the, a lot of the people on USCFootball.com, they're fans of the recruiting process, and they're always interested in kind of what's been going on, and you know, with recruiting with with the players that they like. And um, for you, a lot of people thought you were going to end up. At Oregon, I think Kenny Dillingham made a push late uh, for Arizona State. Uh, what was that recruiting process like for you, and what kind of brought you to your decision to to pick USC? Um, I think at the end of the day, uh, it was more about uh, knowing what I kind of wanted in the end of all of it. Um, NIL uh, was, of course, like a big thing at that time, and like that was when it was kind of fresh and new. So, of course, all my friends were getting offered a lot of large numbers and and everything and um so i think at that time it was either like go to a school where you feel like uh you can get the most money and um hopefully play or you can or you can go to a school where like you can get money but you are at the end of the day gonna be able to be on a three-year plan and at the end of the day um you're not in college to get money you're not in college to like chase a, a bunch of brand deals you're in college to get developed and go to the next level and i think at usc um that is the plan. Um, I think everything um, as far as coaches and um, uh, academics and um, everything uh, outside of football, it's it's more than perfect, but um, uh, it, all it takes is a, a kid that, that wants it and uh, a kid that like wants, uh, um, I would say wants like more out of the college experience than just like the little things and being able to show flashy things off like, this is a program where if everybody's bought in, everything will work out for you. And uh, I think I'm a part of that. Plan. So that's what the recruiting process was like for me. 
Jacoby, of course you wanted to come in and compete, and you've done an excellent job of that so far. But did you expect in year two to be thrust into this role where it's this super sophomore class that you guys have and then a few other players around you, but really you're the core of the receiver room? I mean, Brendan Rice had another year of eligibility if he wanted it. Taj Washington did too. They go to the NFL. A few guys transfer out. Did you expect to be one of the featured receivers so quickly? Um, 100%. That was one of the things that Coach Riley and Coach Simmons and um, Coach Hewitt sold me and uh, uh, a lot of my uh, – I mean, me and Deuce on is um, uh, just being able to come in and take on that role of uh, the the main wide receivers and uh, have such a young wide receiver group um, kind of lead the offense and be able to uh, um, lead from the front. Um, the, the plan from the recruiting process was to uh, – learn the first year and then the next year uh, take on the role. So I think um, as far as the plan, uh, everything's aligned. It's just about um, going in and uh, doing what we need now. Uh, we talked to Zachariah Branch a little bit, and he said that a lot of you guys kind of progressed as far as reading defenses go. Is that something you felt like this spring has kind of helped you a little bit or you made some progress on you know reading defenses, knowing you know where you kind of want to go with your routes? Yeah, hundred percent. I think um, all all of us as receivers kind of um, we start we kind of learn the the certain uh, field intangibles and route running would kind of handle itself in the in the uh, later part of things. But we kind of wanted to take a little bit more uh, with uh, the whole um, IQ part of it and kind of just dissect the game a little just a little bit more and be able to. Uh, like not necessarily change or like alter your route based off a of whole coverage, but be able to stem a route differently, put yourself in a different position, um, body position wise or hands wise, and, and be able to uh, capitalize on a play more um, rather than um, just going in and running a route uh, based on like the concept and uh, like the route tree. We, we've kind of like uh, took a new a new um, pride in uh, the dynamic of how we run routes and uh, the IQ part of it. So I think as a wide receiver group, we've kind of shifted it from like just pure ability and uh, talent wise to just uh, real discipline and respect for the game and learning uh, all of our routes and uh, how we should run them through defenses. Right now, the receiver room was a little smaller than most big time college football programs. You guys got the seven players will probably add at least one here in the transfer portal. I'm going to put you on the spot here, Jacoby. Who's going to be wide receiver one next season and why? Um, I think uh, everybody has a chance to be wide receiver one and catch the ball. Uh, I think our offense uh, holds nobody to not be in that position and, and get a lot of catches. Um, you saw Taj last year. Um, he was clearly uh, the leading wide receiver yards wise, but B Rice had a lot of big plays and uh, contributes to our offense just the same. So I think this year we'll have that sort of same dynamic and be able to um, contribute all to the offense as one and uh, kind of equally be able to um, uh, force force everybody to uh, say all our names when they speak of our receiver group instead of just saying um, USC's wide receiver one is um, such and such or. Uh, stuff like that. So I think um, the whole wide receiver group uh, as a whole is, is going to show everybody that um, we all have the chance to be uh, named wide receiver one and just be able to play with each other and uh, off each other. So you're a, a tall wide receiver, 6'4. Um, you know, you got Deuce Robinson there, big, big receiver too. USC's had a pretty good tradition the last 20 years or so. You know, Mike Williams back in the day with Pete Carroll, but, you know, more recently like Drake London, Michael Pittman. There's been some. Uh, very tall receivers, Dwayne Jarrett. Is there, are you kind of aware of that? And is there any tall receiver either from USC or from somewhere else you kind of model your game after? Um, yeah, I got asked a similar question in the, one of the field interviews. And I, I, I definitely watch all those guys. And like, you can't not uh, watch Drake London and, and mimic your game off him or like the Dwayne Jarrett. Um, but I think like, um, at, at our height, um, being able to uh, do things like uh, release like uh, Marquise Brown or uh, like like little guys like Doug Baldwin, just like being able to be savvy off the line or like in and out of routes at the top of your route and like play like your five four is um, something I've kind of like tried to take on the role of rather than being able to just be a big guy that just post dudes up. I think I've became um, pretty pretty good at um, catching fade balls, but I think. Um, in and out of breaks, uh, I have a lot of room to work, and I think that's uh, 
something I've been able to pride myself upon the, this off season and just uh, take it to another level and be able to uh, showcase that this uh, upcoming season. We all saw your vertical on full display in the Holiday Bowl catching, I think, that second touchdown you got way up in the air to bring it down. Our colleague Chris Trevino says that you told him you had a 48-inch vertical when it was measured at USC. That would break the NFL Combine record by two inches. Do you have that vertical? I want to get to the bottom of that. How high can you jump? I can jump pretty high, but I think uh, it was misconcepted. Um, I definitely have jumped 45 at uh, school before, but 48 is a little bit um, out of reach. I definitely did not. 45 is confirmed, but. Okay, hey, 40. Yeah, that's, 48 that's one off the get, record. 48 will get there. <laughs> yeah, did, did, you, did you play basketball at all? Did you play, I, I'm a volleyball guy. Did you play volleyball? That'd be a great vertical to have, just like hammering yeah. balls down the line or whatever. Yeah, you know, um, growing up, uh, I kind of like learned the the cheat code to the whole, the whole throwing your arm up in the air and um, finessing the uh, height thing. So I think being able to do that, you uh, know, uh, also the fact that uh, just naturally, like always being able to go go up and jump, like like at, on the playground and stuff. I never played volleyball. I did play basketball in high school and stuff, but. Unfortunately, our Red Mountain basketball team wasn't all that great, but all right. It, but I can. I have a little dunk package. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, if you can jump 45 inches, that that makes sense. What does it mean to you, Jacoby, to be a part of this super sophomore wide receiver class with Zachariah, Deuce, Makai? How close are all you guys, and, and what does that mean to to be really the leaders of the receiver room, you guys and Kyron, right now in in your second seasons? You know, I think it's, uh, although it seems like a, a big task and uh, everybody uh, is like, uh, will they be able to do it? I think um, us as friends and uh, like uh, the camaraderie we have and our, our natural ability, um, I think that'll handle itself. Just getting that year under your belt and like being able to make those little bit of mistakes throughout practice, I think that was like enough for us. And I, I think this season we'll be able to slowly but surely let everybody know uh, what we're about and uh, uh, how strong of a, a, a tight-knit group we are as a receiver group. We had a question in the chat. Uh, I'll pull it up here. Uh, thanks to Jesse. Who's the hardest matchup to go against on defense so far? It's pretty deep uh, corner and safety. I mean, the secondary looks a lot different than I think than last year. It's pretty looks pretty deep now. But, yeah, anyone kind of standing out to you when you go in reps again in practice? Um... They're all good. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say anybody's like, like um, putting it, like putting anybody like down or like there's anybody that's like separating themselves as far as from the whole group. I think the whole group has done a great job this spring of just like being able to take the coaching and like take it to the next level. I think everybody's technique has gotten better, but I don't think um, anybody's like standing out or anything like that was as there, far as yeah was there sometimes you get you're getting the reps line and you're like oh he's up third i want to go against him i'm going to back up one or i'm going to step up is there anyone that you're like i want to i want to challenge that guy or someone that you just want to like pair up with um no whoever i go up against gets it uh, i'm not much of a, a a backup and um let somebody else go um uh Probably one of the, mo the, the more physical guys is D-Nick. So I think, um, I mean, he's he's one guy, like, if I had to pick to go up against him on the goal line, being a taller matchup, it might be a little bit more of a, a difficult thing. But um, as far as, like, being scared or anything, I would be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't strike me as a, a fearful guy out on the football field. I'm curious, I brought up Kyron earlier, Jacoby, we don't get to watch a ton of practice, but when I am out there in the early parts of practice, he's taking the first rep a lot. It looks like he's really taking a big leadership role with you guys being a, a little bit younger in that receiver room. What's your relationship like with Kyron, and what have you seen from him this offseason? Yeah, that's Unc for sure. He definitely knows that uh, he's the, the older guy of the group, and he definitely takes that on well. Um, he's not he's not like afraid to, to be the vet and the leader of the group. 
Um, he definitely knows that uh, he has to uh, kind of let everybody know the standard and uh, we all abide by that standard and just kind of let, let him know that we all respect him. And uh, he kind of has helped us all learn the playbook. He's kind of like, let us all know how it, this all works throughout the camps and uh, throughout the lifts. And that's kind of been my, my lift buddy, actually the, the guy I um, go in every day with and uh, kind of, um, not necessarily like go to war with, but like at the end of the day, when you're in that that weight room and sometimes you don't really feel like it, that's what it feels like. So um, that's 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 been my guy this this spring, and we definitely have gotten a lot closer and been able to uh, learn a couple new things about each other and be able to have a have a new respect for each other in the sense of uh, learning where each other were coming from and uh, being able to uh, be better teammates. So uh, all due respect to Karen, great things coming from him this year. All right. Um... Serb had a comment that says, Ryan always asks the most suspect questions. That was a, a listener question, sir. I don't know what you want to say. Like, that wasn't even my question. Like, sorry. We get the haters here, too. To cover. That's okay. It's fun. Uh, turn up Trojan. Can you high point a ball above 10 feet? I'll put that picture up of you uh, kind of high pointing one in the holiday bowl. But that's pretty up there. So that'd be like above the rim. Yeah, I mean, if you can do the basketball, I think you can catch a ball over ten feet. Yeah, so. I guess so. If you you got a dunk package, you should be able to do it. Yeah, for sure. For I, sure. I was gonna answer that for Jacoby and say yes. I, I'm sure you can. <laughs> I would he, think so. Yeah, if he can dunk, Jacoby, Jaden Richardson, a guy who comes from the Division three level at Tufts. USC fans don't really know a lot about this guy. It's not like he transferred from a team where you could just watch his highlights on ESPN or watch a game where he's played. What is he, what kind of receiver, it, that, that was a poorly way to, that was a poor way to ask that question. What can USC fans expect to see from Jaden Richardson? There I go. Um, uh, f uh, the spring game coming up, so you'll be able to see that. But I think um, just being able to know that uh, he's a good receiver, very, very possession catch receiver, been able to get in and out of breaks, um, very, very savvy. Um, just, and he's a he's a good dude. I think when people get the chance to meet him, uh, if you ever get the chance to hear him talk, he's a, a great dude, very receptive of all the coaching, being able to learn the playbook quick. So I think um, him being able to be a guy that uh, is always available, um, knows the knows what we're doing um, quick. So just being able to be reliable and uh, being there for the sure catch uh, is, is what you can expect. Out of him. What, like, just curious when you guys are, Spent a lot of time in the off season, the gains we showed, you know, I can show that picture again, like the, you guys working out together, doing a lot of things together. I mean, I, you know, very competitive group, right? You have a lot of competitive people in the room. Who would you say that you've seen and you're maybe playing other sports, maybe it's basketball at the Lions Center or wherever you're doing, like, who's like the best kind of, some of the best overall athletes on the team? And uh, is there anyone you know, like you know like people know Mookie Betts? He he's like bowls three hundred games. He can do like anything. You got any guys like that that are kind of like super athletes that just do can do whatever? Uh, Deuce Robinson, of course. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Baseball thing, but um, <laughs> you know, I, I dabble a little. I play basketball. We all play basketball. Lake McCree, actually. Um, Lake McCree, a healthy Lake McCree. And in uh, and, and a basketball jersey is a problem. I think we went to the line center and he had like, like out of five games, I think he probably had like 30 of our points. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I, 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 w I wish I was joking. I was just getting boards and feeding it to Lake. But um, he, can, he can dunk all of it. Uh, a healthy Lake um, playing basketball or uh, me golfing. Oh, you're a golfer. Yeah. Oh, when that's... when we when we aren't uh, knee deep in a football, yes, that, I go. That's great. That's all, well, Arizona, man. That's like there's some great courses out exactly. there. You yeah, play in the summer course. for super cheap because it's hot as really hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say something. Hot as what? <laughs> Very hot. <laughs> Jacoby, uh, let's get into the quarterbacks a little bit. What have you seen from Miller in spring camp? What are the differences for him now that? It looks like he's going to be the guy going forward. How have you seen him adjust from being a backup last year to being the uh, potential starter this season? Um, you know, I think Miller, um, he was uh, able to approach last season um, 
like any uh, mature quarterback would. He knew that if Caleb would, went down, um, he would have to be prepared. So I don't think at any point last year, uh, Miller wasn't prepared to go in and do what he had to do. Um, but I think also this year he knows um, he's like the the main guy. So I think, um, I, I don't know, I'm not him and his brain, but I think if I was him, I would be able to say he would be taking a, a different approach to everything um, as far as like uh, mentally, just being able to know that like everybody's kind of like putting it on him, letting them know that like if it's, uh, if it's, um, if anybody needs anything, it's it's definitely going to be from him. So just being able to be dependable now and just learning to kind of like uh, not necessarily grow up, but um, mature into a role that uh, he wasn't in before. And then how but, is – oh, sorry to cut you off. How, how, how is Jade Maeva progressing and does the team – do you feel like he's kind of pushing Miller or just thoughts on Jade and a lot of USC fans haven't really gotten to watch or been able to watch him much so far? 100%. He's definitely a gunslinger, can sling it. Um, I think uh, learning the offense is um, something that he's been able to do and just keep being able to dissect the defense and learning to um, – the, the offense is, is uh, nothing to take lightly. Link um, is a mastermind. I don't – like the more and more we um, sit in the meetings together, the more and more I realize it. But um, he definitely knows what he's doing. So for any quarterback, um, I don't think there's anything they can't learn – from Link in every meeting. So I don't think um, even Miller, like even Caleb last year, every meeting there was always something to pull from Link. So it's not like um, anybody's like not learning anything or anybody's like separating themselves. But I think Jaden has done a, um, a great job of being able to uh, take in all the coaching and uh, been able to uh, make the most out of it in the, in the spring. Have you seen more of Lincoln Riley? Because it sounds, you know, now with Luke Heward doing the quarterbacks, he's kind of bouncing around to different meeting rooms. He's on the defensive side more. But have you seen him kind of more into the receiver room? 100%. Yeah, he's been, been coming to sit in there in our room where uh, we'll go in there to start out the meeting and we'll kind of watch everything together. So um, definitely seeing Link a lot more in the uh, receiver room and just being able to uh, see it from uh, his perspective or like um, – learning uh, how he would uh, do something or how he sees it is just being able to uh, uh, really make the most out of it. And like, it's really crazy when you really think about it. Like sometimes it's surreal. You're like sitting there listening to Lincoln Riley, like dissect the defense. And it's like, man, like this is, this is really why you come to uh, USC and uh, you, you really, you really do everything you're supposed to in high school um, just to be able to get this opportunity to play football at the next level and be coached by some of the greatest to ever do it. Um, just, just you don't you don't take opportunities like this for granted. You don't take them lightly. So I think everybody has realized that. And with Link um, coming around and, and being able to show face, everybody is kind of like not necessarily bought in more, but realized that like this isn't like a, a joke or something to take lightly. This is all something that everybody's really invested in and really cares about. So I think um, him 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 being able to do that is. Uh, so it's, a, it's a little thing, but um, it's a, it's one of the bigger things uh, for me personally. At least. What's it like to be coached by Dennis Simmons? Oh yeah, that's my that's my guy. I love Coach Simmons. Um, he he definitely has an eye for the game. Being able to um, tell me things about my my stems or um, um, my pad level as far as in my route running. Um, being able to sit there and and coach me up even when I don't feel like being coached sometimes. He's very understanding, very um, knowing of how, what it's like to be a college athlete and what it, it feels like. He's coached some of the greats, so it's it's not like this is the first time he's done it. So um, be, me being able to let him know that I trust him and um, just giving my full effort and energy to anything he wants me to do and just kind of being um, – uh, a crash dummy, whatever he wants me to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it at a hundred percent. Just, just let him know I trust him. Um, and I'm going to do it to my uh, best ability. So just, um, playing for him is something I enjoy and, and I will always enjoy. So just, yeah, coach Simmons is my guy. We posted on the, the you were coming on the show on the peristyle on our message board over at uscfootball.com and a few fans had some questions. Uh, would you mind taking a few of them from the fans? Of course, of course. All right. What do you got, Connor? I think the best question 
is from Bush Push 96 and he wants to know what are some of the best nicknames for the guys in the wide receiver room? Ah. Uh, I like that you said Link for Lincoln Riley too. I don't know if it, that's a common one, but I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." That's okay. what Caleb called him last Big year. Link, yeah. Yeah, it's Link. But um <laughs> I'd say um DJ, nobody calls uh, Xavier Jordan Xavier. Everybody calls him DJ. So um, DJ for him. Uh, uh, Deuce Robinson, everybody calls him Deucey. Nobody. <laughs> Deucey, okay. Yeah. Uh, who else? What do they call you? Can't guard Jack. Come on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. That's a good one. <laughs> Uh, Kyron's Unk, Lem, uh, Makai's Lem, that's his nickname. All right. Zach, that's his nickname already. So I call him Zachariah because nobody else calls him that. <laughs> but, uh, I like that. Yeah. Right, good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. You've been very diplomatic with your answers when asked about specific players. He's. Yeah, he's ready to be a politician yes. or a coach, or he's he's already ready. For the West, SC wants to know who is more dangerous in the red zone, Jacoby or Deuce? Ah, <laughs> you guys want me to just like <laughs> boast about myself or something? I think I think uh, me and Deuce's red zone capabilities are like in limitless. When you really think about it, like both of us, um, radius wise and um, just catch catchability wise we kind of just take it to the next level um body control wise and just um pure hands and ability wise talent level it's kind of something we've prided ourselves upon um since high school um i add a little bit of the one hand dynamic to it um just because i do that so much like just joking around and stuff but um i think both of us are capable of um catching any 50 50 ball it's almost not like a 50 50 ball it's more like an 80 um, 20 ball, just being able to go up and uh, box out and just um, you, you rep it so much um, that it, it kind of becomes a uh, natural. And um, if the ball is up in the vicinity, it's probably coming down with either of us. So I don't knock both of us. I think both of us are just right here with each other. Again, he's just polished for a sophomore for sure. Yeah. A, a, another <laughs> great answer. I, I'm curious based on your response there, has there been like a catch of spring practice so far, one of the receivers or maybe a tight end? Has there been one catch that's just been incredible that you could describe or that comes to mind or, or people just doing crazy things every day? I've had a couple of one-handed catches. Um, tight ends have had a couple of good catches, but um, Sometimes if we anybody hear. had a catch of the spring, I'll probably give it to – one of the DBs, can't say a name, but one of the DBs had a great, great catch on a pick. Right. Sometimes at the end of practice, we're waiting outside to interview you guys, and we can hear, like, people go crazy, like, oh, something happened, you know, so nice. So maybe one of those. <laughs> catch of the spring on offense, though. I had a great one on the catch. But oh. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll have to follow up with uh, Lincoln about who made that great interception. I think we actually talked to Doug Belk later this week, so maybe I can ask him. Uh, CS Tahoe 303 wants to know, is there much of a change in practice from last season to this spring? I know you weren't around last spring, but ha has anything changed fundamentally with practices under Lincoln Riley? Um, I'd say the physicality with some of the new defensive guys, some of the new drills we've incorporated. Um, I think a lot of people have saw that Instagram clip of um, us doing that sort of Oklahoma drill, just adding a little bit more physicality into it, um, being able to um, come downhill, lower your pads, and uh, get grimy. We've added a little bit of a, a Trojan period, being able to um, go in short yarded situations and compete a little bit. Um, so I'd say overall, just while I've been here, the, the physicality aspect of it has upped with the new coaching staff and everything like that. So, um, yeah. And then the last one here from Kaboom Trojan, he wants to know, what aspects of your game did you go into the offseason looking to get better at? Where did you want to improve the most? Yeah, um, in and out of my breaks, um, coming out in three steps, not necessarily just um, – 
being able to uh, have low pad level, but um, taking the steps serious. Um, the IQ part of it, going in and uh, watching film with my coaches. Um, and then uh, everything else, like the, the whole uh, gaining weight thing, um, that was a big thing for me. Um, it, although um, all of the, the certain route aspects of it, um, uh, I was trying to handle that. Um, becoming faster while while uh while I was gaining weight um translated um just just getting used to uh carrying that weight and uh wearing it well and and now here we are in the spring so it'll be fun to show everybody we really appreciate the, the time here we went like 35 minutes already but it's, real quick before we go um how has house of victory kind of helped you we want to again thank them for setting the interview up but uh, what kind of an event, any events you've worked with them or how they've, they've kind of helped you your first year of college? Um, I think, uh, networking, being able to, um, meet new people, um, connect with some of the people involved with USC, um, the, the people around USC, even some of the, the, uh, the walk-ons, um, everybody's here for a reason. So being able to, to meet new people and connect with people, um, Everybody around here is someone to respect and, and get to know. Um, House of Victory does a great job of uh, of, do, of of doing that, and uh, just being able to to connect with people overall. Going to the Boys and Girls Club, getting to help those not necessarily help those kids, but like see those kids' days brighten up a little bit more because it's something um, new rather than just the regular Boys and Girls Clubs days. Um, I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club, so I know what that used to be like it sometimes gets repetitive but um having a, a older role models like um all those guys and the track athletes and everybody that goes in there um that that's uh that's a part of it that you you don't take for granted and um you don't get to do that without house of victory you don't get to do the the feed my starving children stuff or um i'm not sure what program it is but where you go make all the meals um you don't get to do that without house of victory putting that all on so i think overall that's that's um where I've been most thankful to see House of Victory. And it's um great team bonding to go um go uh play basketball with a bunch of little kids or or go do that. So it's uh, all fun. I'm sure they love that. Well I Jacoby Lane, oh, hold on, we gotta give you the applause because um, I mean crushed it. Like absolutely crushed it. You are a natural you know, you make me feel worse about myself. Like, man, this kid's like nine <laughs> years old, just killing everything. But great job. We really appreciate you uh, coming on and, you know, wishing you the best of luck. Hopefully you have a fun spring game. And uh, thanks yeah. again for the time. I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate all that. Thank you guys for having me on again. I appreciate it more than you know. All right. Jacoby Lane, check him out. Uh, hopefully you can go to the spring game on Saturday noon over at the Coliseum. Uh, we appreciate him coming on. We're going to take a quick break. Connor and I will talk about uh, the portal opening and the spring game and unlimited transfers now and all that. We don't want to say that in front of Jacoby, but yeah, the players get unlimited transfer now, but we're not going to say that to him. But thanks again, Jacoby, and everyone else will be back in a minute. Alrighty, we're back. Told you Jacoby was going to be good, Ryan. Holy cow, he was great. That was my idea getting him. That on. was your idea. I'm gonna, you're gonna give you applause <laughs> for that. Um, yeah, crushed. He's, he was on. He was early. He like had, you know, it's not easy to set this up. You want it to look good on camera, so sometimes the lighting's bad or the audio's bad or the camera angle, whatever. I mean, he he was just. He was awesome. He was so, fantastic. Do you feel better about like USC's receiver room now just from talking to him? <laughs> like you have to. Definitely. And I, that's the position group I'm probably the most excited to see the development and see how they do because it's a big ask to rely on so many young guys the way USC is. But you look at the recruiting rankings, you look at the Holiday Bowl last year, it's only one game. But I think there's a confidence with this group. And I don't know if that would be there if – they didn't get that opportunity in the Holiday Bowl. I really believe the six weeks leading up to that bowl game was huge for everyone around USC, but specifically those receivers. And then we saw what all those guys were able to do. Funny enough, Zachariah Branch, who probably had the best season as a freshman receiver a year ago, he was the one who 
did the least in that game as a wide receiver. He had a nice punt return. So I, I feel like the guys who needed to get their confidence up the most had that opportunity. And I can't wait to see what they do in the spring game and the next season. I think it's a fascinating room. Yeah, the one guy you knew, he was the one that didn't even have to do that much in the Holiday Bowl. And like Jacoby gets two touchdowns and, you know, Lemon has a big game and all that. So cool stuff there. Uh, yeah, let everyone know we didn't kind of talk at the top of the show because we wanted to get right into Jacoby. But um, we are going to talk about the transfer portal. We'll talk about the spring game a little bit and let you guys go. We'll answer a few questions. If you have questions, podcast at uscfootball.com or you can call or text us at 424-254-9141. Uh, we haven't had a Apple podcast review for a while, but if you have the Apple podcasting app, you can review us there. Leave us a five-star rating and some kind of review. You can do the same thing on Spotify. We appreciate all that. We appreciate our sponsor, uh, Trader Joe's. So make sure you get over to check out Trader Joe's. I go to their website, TraderJoe's.com, to get ideas. The latest one I saw is a sweet and spicy whipped brie. I do love the, <laughs> I love the soft cheeses. And if you, it, it tells you on the website, double cream cheeses that it contains at least sixty percent butter fat, so it's going to be rich and creamy. And uh, they have a spicy uh, whipped brie recipe, uh, which I you know, look over there. I want to check that one out because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a brie guy. I'm a soft cheese guy. And uh, you can get little baguettes or whatever you want to do and dip in there. But it looks really good. So make sure you go check it out, Trader Joe's. But thanks to them, too. I was at Trader Joe's yesterday before USC's practice. I picked up two things, the peanut butter filled pretzels. I saw those. Yep, which you saw me eating. Yeah, between... yeah. Did you offer me any? Oh, I don't think. Oh, I... You did not. No. Why didn't you ask? It was a new bag. <laughs> I would have been happy yeah, to. Just, was, oh, he'll probably offer. Oh. I, no, I, just, I didn't want to eat any, but I was I wanted to, but I was like, I shouldn't eat any. How so rude of me. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. That's We're, so funny. I don't get between you and your food. True. I do like to eat a lot. <laughs> that's funny that you brought that up, though, because in my head, I remembered thinking like, oh, I should offer. And then I think I got like a text or something and then I got distracted. So I, I won't make that mistake again. And then I got the uh, the soyaki sauce, which is the soy and the teriyaki sauce yeah. mixed. I put that on uh, these bowls I make with chicken, rice, and green beans. It tastes like you order Chinese food, but you make it at home. So I really like that too. Very cool. Uh, all right. Well, thanks again to Jacoby Lane. Thanks again to House of Victory. Hope you guys all enjoyed that interview. If you didn't, then I don't know why you're listening to the show because that's the kind of the best stuff we do. But that was great. Uh, yeah, I mentioned it earlier so uh we heard that the transfer portal is now like unlimited time so instead of like the you get one free ticket and then you gotta like ask for permission after that no more all the court cases all that stuff you can basically transfer wherever you want we've seen players transfer from the december window and now enter the portal again in april um so that's going on and the portal's open it's been open since tuesday uh i guess midnight you know when it turned tuesday but it hasn't been that impactful. We asked Lincoln Riley about it, and he was like, you know, you never know, but it doesn't seem like with the ones we heard about early are the ones kind of that have entered the portal, and that's about it. It's, it's, so there's not a lot of action, and I don't think nationally there's not been super fireworks or anything. There's some names, and there's some names that USC can be interested in, but it's not been um, crazy town, I guess you could say, Connor. Absolutely. And Cormani McLean was a big name yesterday, but remember, he didn't play a lot at Colorado as a freshman, and Deion Sanders was asked about it, and he said he knows what he needs to, to do to get on the field. It feels like there was some disconnect there, so him getting into the portal wasn't a huge surprise. And then USC had the surprises, like you said, last week, and now since then, maybe one or two players or more jump in after the spring game. Who knows? But since Rakes and Zandamella left, nothing Really big today, Demonic Williams from TCU, who played at Bishop Alamany, he entered the portal, and USC, of course, is interested in him, but it sounds like he is going to have a lot of competition for his services because he's probably the best interior defensive lineman in the portal right now. There's another guy from Kent State, and then USC has been doing some good work with two defensive linemen, Dayon Hayes, who's from Pitt. He's the guy who made the headlines for saying, I really like Pitt, but I don't think the offense is good enough for us to do anything, so I'm out of here. USC's looking at him. He's an edge. And then Jermaine Lole, who went to Long Beach Poly, class of 2018, so this guy is old. I think he could help. He's an interior defensive lineman. He was at Louisville, like I said, most recently. He was at Arizona State before, and he's going to visit USC too. So those are the two names from today. It's going to continue these names, the buzz, the, the links, 
as long as the portal's open, USC will be involved. And it sounds like they're prioritizing the defensive line, but I expect them to add at least one wide receiver, at least one offensive lineman, probably two, and then some of these defensive guys. Yeah, Lole was like at ASU and USC was in the running for that. And Louisville had a big run. I think they had a, like a, a, a big NIL push or something. But it sounds like some of those guys are leaving now too. So uh, just remember, when guys are in the transfer portal, everyone that signs with the school you like wasn't like escaping a horrible situation and everyone that leaves your program wasn't like a, a, a locker room cancer. There's some mix of both, you know, sometimes you go somewhere and it's just not going to work out. Sometimes a player's been a lot of different places and you know, they, they just don't stick anywhere. I mean, there's a lot of weird, you know, every, every player is different and every situation is different. But when you start seeing trends where like a whole bunch of guys were going to Louisville and then there's more guys kind of leaving Louisville. So, okay, what's going on there? I'm not, I'm not, I'm curious to see, but Lole was one that uh, I think USC wanted out of ASU and now, you know, maybe an opportunity to get him. But like you said, it's like, this is like a one year deal, right? Like this is, he's 2018 or something. There's, there's some players that have been around a really long time. Maybe he has more eligibility, but if you're class of 2018, I can't see how you would possibly have another year of eligibility yeah. when you're going to be playing in the, the 2024 season. So I'm sure he's a COVID waiver guy. I'm sure he redshirted at some point too because, I mean, class of 2018, Chris likes to talk about how I know everyone and where they went to high school. That was getting close to before my time of knowing where a lot of these guys were or from. So I, I, I thought that was funny, but I, I do think look at college basketball, you get a lot of older players. It didn't work great for USC in some positions last year. It makes a lot of sense though. The older and more experienced the guy is the, the bigger, the impact he'll probably have lowly. I wouldn't be surprised if he ultimately, if he comes to USC, if he has more of an impact, than Anthony Lucas did last year, who was that, oh, okay, five-star Texas A&M. He spent one year in college. He's ready to go prospect. Sometimes you just need more seasoning, if that makes sense. You need to be in college football for longer. You need to get in the weight room. It can take guys a little bit to get up to speed, and I think that happened with Anthony Lucas last year and this lowly guy who looks like he'll be a one-and-done, and hopefully it works out. Last year, Jack Sullivan was a one-and-done. That didn't exactly work out. Same with Keon Bars. I think, though, just because those two guys didn't work out doesn't mean you don't want to keep going after the one and done guys. That makes a lot of sense with the age. And Lola, uh, LFG says he missed a year or two due to injury. Yeah. So there's probably there too. Uh, Mark, uh, the one that confuses me is rakes. Uh, do you want to like, yeah, that's, that's a transfer in, never play a game transfer out situation, but we've seen that happen. It's not uncommon now. It's, you know, unlimited transfers. You can do that. I've tried to ask around a little bit to get, some insight as to why he left. I even asked Lincoln Riley. I sort of figured Lincoln say, yeah. wouldn't say, but I wanted to give him an opportunity to maybe say, yeah, he didn't like where he was on the depth chart like he did with Jason Zandamella. He talked about how Jason wasn't going to help USC this year. So something happened with Rakes. It doesn't sound like it was NIL related, but I don't know that 100% right now. Whatever it was, that's just the era that we're in, and I expect – that not to be the last time USC brings someone in in January and then they leave in the spring. I think that's just sort of how it goes. If you don't like something during spring camp, you have that option to leave. And I, I do think it's unfortunate, but more guys are going to do that. Yeah. Was it Proctor that left Alabama <laughs> who was committed to Iowa originally goes back to Iowa and then he's in the portal again. I think he's, did he commit to Alabama? Yeah. He's back he, at Alabama. He's back at Alabama. And there was someone uh, I think I was listening to cover three and they, they mentioned this, like they, they mentioned that was like, well, he just wanted to go see Caitlin Clark play. And then, so he just went, to, <laughs> he just left. He went, oh, go see, see Smart that. man. Yeah. And then he goes back to Alabama, but yeah, there's going to be a bunch of that stuff now with no penalty for transferring. And I think we'll be in this window of this happening for a little while until as we keep progressing, there will be contracts and stuff. And so, Maybe not you have to be at the school and a coach, you know, it was horrible before where like if you wanted to transfer, your head coach could say, give you a list of schools you're not allowed to go to, you know, like your hometown school because it's, we might play them in three years. They, I mean, they were, it was really bad. And so now it's completely the opposite. It was so, so restrictive and so unplayer, you know, unfriendly to the players. And now it might be a little too much freedom. I don't know, but you can just transfer as much as you want. But I think once you get to the, the contract sp space where the schools themselves are, are paying the players and all that, I think we might see a little bit more stability. But we everyone predicted like there's going to be a ton of 
uh, activity. And so far, there's not. Now, there is a 48-hour um, waiting period that, you know, when a school, when a, if a player goes to the school and says, hey, I want to go in the portal, it's kind of like a um, cooling off period. So they don't have to, re, you know, put them officially in the database for 48 hours. But we hear about it. You know, we, we, when play, you know, we were hearing before the portal was open, like this guy's planning on doing it. But just in general, it just doesn't seem like there's huge fireworks happening right now. We still got a couple of weeks, right, you know, for, of the portal opening. But, um, you know, Lincoln Riley addressing it, saying he's not expecting any more players to go. I think for USC, you were going to hear about it before the portal opened. Uh, but there will be some guys. And we got a bunch of spring games this weekend, four in the Pac-12 or former Pac-12, uh, you know, some other games across the country. And maybe guys are waiting. Um, I know Bud Elliott mentioned that if you have a contract with, or, you know, you have an agreement with your collective, maybe you're waiting till after the spring game to get your last check. And then once you check, you get your check, then you might want to go to the portal. So there could be some action later, but if we were, if you were like portal watching, it's been kind of like, eh, there's not really that much going on. Especially on the offensive line. And I think that's where USC needs the most help. So it's great to see them prioritizing the defensive line. That's the two public visits they have right now, unless something's happened since we've gone on the air. I yeah, haven't seen anyone else sometimes. planning but. <laughs> a visit. But I believe, Ryan, that the offensive line is the biggest area of need, specifically at right tackle. And so it'll be interesting to see how USC and Dave Emmerich, the general manager, the coaches, approach that right tackle spot because I think they desperately need another tackle. I like Mason Murphy. I think he's a, a solid player. Maybe he's more of a guard than a tackle right now. If the season started tomorrow, he would be USC's right tackle. I, I'm rooting for him. I hope he can lock down that job. But just for depth purposes, if one of these guys on the line gets hurt right now, USC's not in a very good position because they just have a lot of players who have no game reps. Yeah. Uh, well, we got spring game uh, coming up. So we'll Connor and I will be at practice, the final practice before the spring game on Thursday afternoon. Again, we don't get to watch that much of it. We get to do a little bit. So hopefully you're checking out the site. We do our sights and sound videos of what we get to see in the first few minutes of practice. Get some stuff up there. I put some wide receiver highlights up on uh, Tuesday. We'll see what we can get, whatever like kind of is good in front of us on Thursday. And then, of course, the game uh, on Saturday. Um, yeah, interesting to see. You know, how much the starters are going to play. If you remember, USC scored in like three plays last year. Um, oh, I remember. I'll never Ma forget that. Mario Williams, a touchdown, and then... And I asked uh, Lincoln Riley if that's concerning, the offense scoring in three <laughs> plays, and he got all mad. <laughs> and it was concerning. Turns out, <laughs> it was. Um, but yeah, we. I mean, the, the main thing is, we. you know, we don't get to see much right now. So get just something in a spring game. You don't want to read too much into it. But just what is the defense... Uh, look like not necessarily who's the starters and that kind of stuff I mean there's a we're a long way away from that but just sort of just like get a feel for what is this defense doing are defensive linemen trying to run through offensive linemen and, and use their power or is it more about you know running around guys and trying to make a big play you'll give up a few big plays in order to make one later on you know that that's kind of what the defense was before it seemed like this you know, roller coaster ride. Is it going to be more consistent? Are they going to be able to like shut some stuff down? I'm curious to see that just kind of what it looks like in general, uh, running with uh, Danton Lynn there controlling the defense. Who starts next to Bear Alexander with Rakes gone? I think that's question number one. So the first play from scrimmage, I don't think I have a pair of binoculars, but maybe I'll use yours, Ryan. And I'm looking right at the line of scrimmage and I'm seeing who's next to Bear. Is it Elijah Hughes? Is it uh, maybe Nate Clifton from Vanderbilt. Is it Anthony Lucas, who this week or last week, Sean Newis said is the most versatile defensive lineman on the team. Is it Dejan Lafitte? There's a whole bunch of opportunities for guys to step up now that Rakes is gone. And I wonder who the coaching staff feels the best about to put next to Barry Alexander. Yeah, we will see. But yeah, hopefully you guys can make it out there. Otherwise, we'll we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage, photos, videos. All kinds of stuff over there at the uh, at the USC um, spring game. Um, I do want to give a shout out. Uh, uh, Rachel reached out to me. Uh, her husband, uh, his birth his birthday's this month. Uh, Keith Williams, big fan of the show, and she had reached out through the Peristyle, say, "Hey, would you could you give my husband a shout out? He'd be really excited." And so, Keith, happy birthday! And uh, 
yeah, Rachel, thanks for reaching out and hope you guys enjoy the show. It was a good show to be shouted out on because uh, Jacoby Lane just absolutely crushed it. Um, yeah, I could see him in broadcasting or something, you know, like I, he could definitely do that if he wants to just super smooth. I love that. Um, we had a question from Jack in New Jersey, considering the recent significant defensive coaching staff upgrades, I find it a little bewildering that bear Alexander would leave the team at this time. Now I think he wrote this after you know, when the rumors were, he was going in the portal to get more of a lucrative NIL deal somewhere else was the ego bruised during spring camp. Are there truly family matters that are drawing him closer to home? Seems like he's he's leaving a lot of potentially great coaching, which could benefit his draft status. Just curious, Jack in New Jersey. A lot of people had those same questions, and I was told it was a financial move, and that was taken care of by USC. He's all good now, got a better deal, his camp did, and he's locked in and ready to go. Yeah, we had a lot of people. Curtis, I'll play this voicemail too. Curtis was kind of concerned about it. You guys, is Curtis. This Bear Alexander rumor of him transferring, and he and he now says he never planned to transfer. <laughs> he doesn't even know what this is about. Somebody could easily start a rumor in this transfer portal world that we live in and cause a world where there were so many on three uh, YouTube places that had Bear Alexander going to Colorado. He's going to Texas. He's going, man, well, Oregon, of course, Oregon. They, all kind of people was going to have Bear Alexander, and it was just a rumor. I guess we're just going to have to get used to this stuff. And Bear Alexander was light in the ass last year. At 300 pounds, even a defensive tackle is eventually going to get pushed around by sheer weight disadvantage. You got to be 320 on up, like the big boys. Talk to you later, Curtis. From the rain of <laughs> but part of, if I'm not mistaken, Connor, and he's like, "Where does this rumor come from?" His did, camp he, told everyone that he was going to go. Did he post it on his Instagram or something? And he too? did post it on his own yeah. Instagram, but. His it camp was, leaked to a lot of people. He's going to go. He's going to leave. He's going to leave. Yeah. The, people did not just make that up. No, it wasn't made up. So it wasn't like just rumor. But you're right. Like there there could be some of that. But I think people can dispel those rumors uh, if something like that. And he up. easily, if it was fake, then don't put the graphic on your Instagram story with the emoji. Say, this is wrong. You can, you know, I think he just kind of did some damage control with that tweet. And I don't really take that at face value or, or hold that against him. That's just part of the game. You, you stuff goes on behind the scenes and then you come out the other side and no, oh, I don't know what that was all about. So no, no hard feelings for me, for him on that. But to what Curtis was saying, if that really was a rumor and a rumor only, there was no truth behind it at all. He very easily could have said, I don't know where this is coming from and please ignore. I'm locked in at USC. He could have sent that tweet a day or two earlier. Then that yeah. would have shut everyone up. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. The, um, he is someone that transferred a lot in high school. Yeah. First college place transfers. I think it's good that he's sticking around. And that's, you know, if, if oh, it's, it's more than good. Yeah. You, Why do you think he's sticking around? Because Lincoln Riley made sure yeah. he was going to stick around. He knows how important Bear Alexander is to this team. Without Bear, you can get away with no Isaiah Rakes. But without Bear, you, you got real trouble in the middle of that defense. You can't just find another guy like him. So I I, I think, you know, he, he was a little bit un happy and Lincoln Riley said, okay, we can't afford to have this guy unhappy. And now he's around. We had a question in the YouTube chat, Lamont, uh, please tell me USC isn't seriously thinking about bringing in Kamani McLean, McLean, Kamani, what is Kamani <laughs> McLean, Kormani McLean <laughs> in, I don't see him as a fit for USC. That's sort of how I saw it too. But I did hear yesterday that Cormani, through his people, had reached out to some of the USC collectives, and so I think there's definitely some interest from his side, and I wonder if the interest is real on the USC side because just two years ago, I believe he was a five-star recruit, one of the top, yeah. maybe the top cornerback in that class, and yeah, maybe there are some character concerns a little bit, especially with him and Dion not really being on the same page last year. He's probably the guy you would take a flyer on because... He is so talented, and he does have that ability. Now, if he's looking for a huge payday after not really doing anything as a freshman, I, I don't think USC would be into that. But if there's interest on both sides and he's looking just to come in and keep his head down and work, at least that's what he's going to say. I don't think 
that would necessarily hurt. USC would need to do their homework on this one, though. I, I don't think. Hundred uh, percent. I don't think it's a situation where you you do everything you can to get this guy like they did with Bear a year ago. No, I don't think so. And I mean, there were issues. One of the, his coaches even called him out for like spring. Wasn't ball. working hard. He wasn't working hard. He wasn't in shape. Certain spring ball, like you see, like Jaco like. That, that picture of Jacoby Lane, he worked really hard from January to February to get ready for spring, and it didn't sound like McLean was doing that. So, it, you know, it's hard to go from, if you any of you have gone to college, it's a big transition to go from high school if you're an athlete or not, and some players do it really well and some don't. So you, I think you have to do your homework to make sure he's going to like, hey, you can't just you know, it's like you you didn't do your homework in high school and you got good grades. And then you get to college and you're like, why am I flunking? Like, because you're not doing, you're not studying anymore. And so it's, sometimes it takes you a semester to kind of get going. And if they feel like that's his case where he can get it rolling as long as he, now he realizes he has to work hard, then you could probably work with him because he's such a talented kid. But if not, then, you know, it's probably not going to work out. So That's how I see it too. And it's tough to gauge how much a kid will buy in just in these two weeks in the transfer portal. So there, there are ways to to try to do your homework without just talking to his camp. You can talk to his high school coach and people around him where he grew up in Florida, but it's very, it, it's challenging. It's not like you're recruiting a high school kid and you recruit him for two years and you really know him. Recruiting a guy in two weeks, it's different. It's challenging. And I think USC, or I know USC isn't the only school who's dealt with bringing guys in from the transfer portal who, who didn't work out. It's, it's really hard to plug a lot of holes that way. And, that's why Lincoln Riley wants to build more from the high school ranks, and he's felt like he's needed to build from the portal ranks, of course, because the roster wasn't in a good spot. It makes a lot of sense, but recruiting from the high school ranks, that's always going to be the way to, to, to build your team the best way, or to build your team the best. Swayze says, uh, DL, think you guys addressed the callers. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that comment. He, he didn't think we addressed how USC's undersized point. on the defensive line. He's like, P all equals I, MV and F <laughs> equals MA. Yeah, uh, all I can say to that is the – with Benny Wiley and the new staff, they, they've bulked up. So the Sam Greens of the world and some of the guys who Alex Grinch recruited who are undersized, they're just going to be undersized. And I don't know how much we'll we'll see of them this year. But, I mean, Bear Alexander, to Curtis's point, could he bulk up a little more? Yeah, but 300-pound athletic guy, I, I'm not going to complain about his body. He looks the part. Nate Clifton, I think, looks the part. Jamil Muhammad, to me, a little bit undersized, but... I think he's one of those guys who can really help you this year as, as an edge rusher. Anthony Lucas has that crazy body, and people have talked a lot about how he's made big strides. I, I think they're trying their best to make an improvement with some of the size stuff, and I don't really know what else to say. Like, you're not going to bring in five 300-pound guys from the portal. They're doing the best they can, and I, I think right now we just kind of have to tip our caps to them because they, what else can you do? You can't overhaul – a defensive line and in, in one off season, you can bring in better coaches. You can change the diets and try to bulk people up. I think they're doing all they can. I, I don't really have a, a problem with the defensive line right now. I think Lincoln Riley knew after last season that it wasn't good enough and he's gone um, a, a really, really long way to make sure it gets better. hundred percent. We got one last one. We'll let you go. We got to get Chris in here. I got a HOA meeting. I'm not really excited about it. I got to go to, but Chris will be doing the composite two-star recruits podcast right after us. Uh, sir, USC has interest in CJ West, Kent State defensive lineman. Should we expect a visit? He hasn't even tweeted about getting an offer from USC. I think they definitely do have interest, but a lot of schools have offered him. Michigan came in today. I think the first step with him, with him would be him reporting an offer and then take it from there. All right. Well, yeah, keep watching over at uscfootball.com. If you're not a member, we talked about the Peristyle. That's the premium message board. We are doing a portal 60% off sale over there. I should have mentioned that earlier. So if for whatever reason you're not a subscriber, go over. This is an amazing deal. 60% off. You get a year's worth. You can try it out. I think you'll like it. Get in the peristyle. You'll, you'll start getting uh, in conversations with a lot of USC fans from all over the world talking about all these things. So I think you'll really enjoy it. A lot of great information over there. So make sure you go check it out. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep you up to date on what's going on in the portal and like I mentioned, there'll be a composite two-star recruits podcast coming up with Gerard and Chris talking all about things, USC recruiting, and the portal is a part of that too. But it was great. Um, loved uh, Jacoby Lane being on. So thanks so much to him. Thanks to House of Victory. Again, for setting that up, we really appreciate the partnership with them because they've been uh, very helpful. And hopefully it's informative for you guys to, instead of five minutes after practice or a game, we can sit down with a player for a half hour or so and 
really kind of get them to know them a little better. It's, it's fun for us, and uh, hopefully it's fun for all you guys, too. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to wrap it up. Any last words, Connor? See you Saturday at the Coliseum, hopefully. Yes, we'll see you there. Um, thanks, everyone, for listening and tuning in. For Connor Morissette, I'm Ryan Abraham. Hope you enjoyed the show, and we will talk to you next time.